All right, as you already know, C.J. Anderson joined the Detroit Lions. He signed, and Ian Rappaport unveiled how much C.J. Anderson was getting for his one-year deal. Let's talk about it. We'll be back. Motor City Sports Talk. Appreciate everybody for showing love. Blessings to the brothers and sisters out there supporting the channel. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email as well. All those links in, uh, or email are in the description. And C.J. Anderson signed for $1.5 million. One-year deal. Um... He got a signing bonus of two hundred thousand, and it's incentive based as well, and he can earn up to three million dollars. So those incentives, we're one hundred percent not sure what those things are, but usually it's maybe like rushing yards or how many games you played in a row, uh, or not in a row, but how many games you play overall, and you know how many carries you get. So it can vary, but um, very cap friendly deal. Obviously, the Lions could have went another route. They could have went Jay Ajayi, but he coming off a knee injury. Um, they could have paid a little bit more for Mark Ingram, um, but I felt that this was a better deal um, than paying Mark Ingram. And I just seen how much he got paid. I kind of I can't think, but with Baltimore, but I think it's a better deal because you know Anderson is hungry. He's still under thirty. He's twenty eight years old. He ran real hard with with the Rams. So you know they wanted to keep the the narrative of a power back to you know pair up with Carryon Johnson, Zach Zinner, and Theo Reddick, well mostly Theo Reddick. Zach Zinner ain't getting no play. Some reason people don't like Zach Zinner, but I see the improvement, man. So uh shout out to him. So, you know, you got a cheaper, you got a deal, you got a guy on a cheaper deal who probably got less miles on his body than Mark Ingram at this point. Um, don't have the whole, you know, PED history as well. I don't think either that Mark uh, Ingram had. Ingram is a is a uh, flint guy. I'm not mad at him. Heisman trophy winner, but at the end of the day, it's all about prices, man. And it's a good price for the Lions, man. Um at the most he can make his three mil. And then, you know, you know, he making one five one point five, he got two hundred thousand and he hungry. You know, he hungry to prove what he done with the Los Angeles Rams wasn't a fluke. He was the apple of uh, the Denver Broncos I a couple years ago. And like I said before, I can't stress this enough. Miles. He was out the whole last year until like the end of the year with the Rams that Malcolm Brown got hurt and then Gurley went back and forth. So you know, he, he he pretty much fresh. He didn't even play, what, a half a season with the with the Rams, man. And he got Super Bowl experience. So, at the end of the day, you know, it, I don't think it's out the realm of possibility. And I don't know exactly what the Lions going to do. But I don't think it's out the, plan, uh, uh, the, the realm of possibility they can make a Super Bowl run. Because last year, I didn't really see nobody in the NFL that 100% I, that, that feared. Now, Kansas City, they look scary, but they didn't have no defense. You know what I'm saying? New England, that was one of the worst Super Bowl winning teams that I've seen from top to bottom, attribute wise. And in the NFC, I mean, shit. You know, had the Cowboys beat the Rams, we talking about the the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. We know they not that good. You know what I'm saying? And you know the Saints, they looking for Drew Brees to have one last hurrah. But really, for Drew Brees, he just Michael Mike, uh, Michael Thomas and then Kamara out to the flats and with the Will Ross and Option Ross and then Ingram up the middle. So. It's nothing, it's nothing too scary, man. But um, So you never know when that experience might kick in because they don't have a ton of guys with Super Bowl experience. Trey Flowers and C.J. Anderson who went up against each other last year brings that to the table. So also, you know, what if, you know, carry on, you know, get hurt or whatever. You got a guy that knows how to hold on to the ball, um, can run between the tackles. So you always want to get north and south runners as part of your backfield. You know, east and west is the is the longest way to the end zone. North and south is the quickest way to the end zone. So, you know, you ain't got to have a rookie that got to learn pass protection. You know, you got a guy that's fairly fresh, fairly durable, durable, and you got him for the cheap, cheap. So, um, I ain't mad at it, man, at all. I thought they should have went more of a speed back, but they always can cut Reddick or they always can cut Zinner. And if the the running back presents itself in the draft, a Darrell Henderson, love him. I told you guys how much I love Kareem Hunt that one year. <laughs> But um, you can go ahead and take him. So this don't strap you done at none at all. And if C.J. Anderson don't work out, you can cut the shit out of his ass and bring somebody else in. So it's a type of cap-friendly uh, contract they got. So Bob Quinn is definitely killing it, keeping payroll down, man. So you got to give him that because when he came up here, he had a lot of dead money, messed up cap situation, and now they didn't clear it. And now he's taking care of the cap, and they still got, what, $27, $26 million under the cap. So they can make it happen, Captain. But, hey, it's Mercy Sports Talk. I'll source those links in the description so you know that it's true. And uh, don't forget, keep checking us out on social media. All those links in the description. Keep sharing the videos. And uh, Mercy Sports Talk, we active when they not. We working. They sleep. So y'all know how it is, man. We're going to get it in one time for the one time. Can't wait till the Pistons game later. We gone.